By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back with more action for you from the Camel Trophy. And we've got two pretty cool decks going mano a mano. We've got Chris Schuster, who is playing with a mono black, foreign black bordered deck. It's super cool. I've got a lovely deck photo. And he's playing against uh, Peter Christian. And he's bringing a deck with him called Dance of Fetties. It's blue and it's got a lot of fatties in there like Mama Moti Jin and Air Elemental. Now before I start with the deck deck, because I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this and go straight to the matches. The easiest way to do that is by checking the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games, click on there and that will take you straight to the games. And also you can find more information about the rule set of this tournament in the description below. I can already tell you that we're playing according to the gentleman rules. That means no Library of Alexandria and no Mind Twist in any of the decks that are participating in this event today. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with uh, Dance of Fetties by Peter Christian. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Peter Christian, Dance of Fetties. And the first cards that really kind of pop out of this deck picture are of course the three dance of manys that are centered in the deck photo so maybe have a look at that enchantment first so it's too blue for an enchantment from the dark that reads when dance of many enters the battlefield create a token that's a copy of target non-token creature when dance of many leaves the battlefield exile the token when the token leaves the battlefield sacrifice dance of many so they're connected together right and then it says at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice dance of many unless you pay blue blue so there is an upkeep cost with dance of many unfortunately if it wouldn't have that upkeep cost it would be insanely much much better than clone for example but i kind of like this because it means you can choose between clone and dance of many and you can kind of make your own decisions based on your strategy in this case peter has chosen to go with the dance of many instead of the clone now the rest of the deck has a clear goal right he wants to play out his bigger creatures, air elemental, Mahamoti Jin, maybe a surrender per free, you know, as fast as he can. Then he wants to copy those with Dance of Many and just get a lot of damage uh, in through the air, you know, having these big flyers kind of dominate the game. Now, in order to get them out early, he's playing with three mana vault, three Fowler Stones, a Soul Ring and a Mox Sapphire. So all these cards are ramp, right? And he can use that ramp to quickly ramp out one of his big creatures. Now, uh, a creature that I really like in all these between all these fatties is the card Sage of Letnam because Sage of Letnam is this little bearded guy. It's a one, two from antiquities and it's got a really cool ability. You can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and then you get to draw a card. So this card goes really well with Mana Vault, right? After you've tapped Mana Vault, you probably don't want to untap it anymore. And with Sage, you can get ultimate value out of it by sacking it and drawing a card for it as well. So first you take the mana out to play a big creature, then you sack it to draw an extra card. So it's quite cool. Then we also see uh, one black card in here, by the way, which is Demonic Tutor. So he splash, uh, splash that to find the cards that he needs. Kind of makes sense. He's also playing with blue power. So that makes Demonic Tutor a little bit better as well. And it's, it's quite easy, I guess, to splash a black source because all you need is just the right dual lands and you know if you play with flower stone your opponent usually has a city of brass so the flower stone can make any color of mana so that can also help you to produce uh black we also see one copy of diamond valley i think diamond valley is pretty good in this deck diamond valley a card from arabian nights a land that cannot produce mana but what it can do is you can tap sacrifice a creature gain life equal to the toughness of the creature so this is quite nice because when you have a big fat creature on the battlefield your opponent is very likely to destroy it or steal it or do something with it. And then in response to that, you can sack it to the Diamond Valley, gain life from it, you know? So that is a pretty good deal. I also really like to see Diamond Valley in combination with Control Magic because you steal something with Control Magic. The moment your opponent plays, for example, a Disenchant on your uh, Control Magic, you can simply, in response, sack it to your Diamond Valley so that your opponent doesn't get the creature back. So it's, it's when you've got Diamond Valley and you play um, a Control Magic, it's always a win-win scenario. So that is, you know, that is, that is quite nice. Okay, this is the deck of Peter Christian. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Chris. Now I'm really a fan of this deck because it's all black bordered, which I love, and it's all foreign black bordered. So I believe it's all German, right? So I think it's super cool, Chris, that you collected all these cards together and, and made it whole, you know, I always like it, you know, don't you like it when you look at a deck photo and it makes sense? Like, for example, you play everything revised or everything alpha, in this case, everything foreign black bordered. 
I really, I really like that. Now, when we look at what the deck wants to do, so look at the cards themselves, it is a pretty straightforward mono black deck, right? These are the decks that, you know, used to win events. I guess there are a few cards missing because they're not in the four and black bordered card pool, which is, of course, Sinkle is the one that, that, that I really noticed as, okay, that's a card that you would normally play in this deck, but now you don't. Um, I guess... You could consider adding an Underworld Dreams, which you see a lot in these type of decks. But instead of looking at what's not there, let's have a look at what is there. Because what is there is also quite powerful. We see four Black Knights, four Hypnotic Specters, four Juggernauts, three Sengir Vampires. So quite a, he's quite heavy on creatures. We also see one Royal Assassin, by the way. So with this deck, he can quickly put pressure on his opponent, especially if he gets a Dark Ritual turn one. And he can play Hypnotic Specter turn one, or he can play out an early... Uh, um, a juggernaut or an early uh, Sangir Vampire. I've also seen uh, people win games when they had a lot of rituals in hand and won uh, Drain Life. So that's also a, a thing that can really, really work. So, you know, I, I remember somebody killing me uh, with like three Dark Rituals in a row and then a Drain Life. And that really made me think about, okay, Dark Ritual is not just good to have the turn one hippie. Also, later in the game, it can be decisive. And I think the same thing goes here for, for example, Howl from Beyond with Dark Ritual. You know, that's also kind of a great way to, to add some extra points to your creature that's, that's coming through and that way maybe killing your opponent. So there, there's more to Dark Ritual than just using it for your turn one hippie or to get an early Sangir out or Juggernaut. You know, you can do more with it. Um, there are also three Nevenerals Discs in the, in the deck of Chris. So I think it's really good to play with Nevenerals Discs when you're playing with Black because you have no answers to artifacts or enchantments. Um, and also, in this case, it's really hard for him to deal with, for example, a Mistress Factory. And with the disc, you know, he can at least respond upon activation of Factory. He can say, okay, I'm not just going to blow everything up. So I think it's a really good decision uh, by Chris that he's playing with three discs. I think, I think it's great because you, you just need to have ways to kind of kill your opponent. Then on the uh, on the bottom row, I think we kind of see the sideboard of Chris. We didn't see a sideboard in the deck photo of Peter Christian, by the way, but that sideboard is super cool as well. We see four Batmoon and uh, we see four Urg Raiders, which I think is such a cool card. Urg Raider, one black and two for, uh, no, one black and one for two, three creature that has to attack every time. If it doesn't attack, because you can choose not to attack with it, but then it deals two damage to you. So preferably you, you want to attack. Now, I always love to see Urg Raider and Batmoon because... You can have Urk Raider maybe, you know, turn two and then turn three Batmoon. You've got like a three, four attacker, which which is quite strong. There's also a Cormus Bell in this deck. Cormus Bell is so cool because Cormus Bell, four to cast, makes all swamps into one, one black creatures. And because it makes them into black creatures, they also get pumped by the, the bad moon. So one of the things that Chris can do after game one is kind of board in his bad moons and board in his Corvus Bell and just have this army of swamps to overwhelm his opponent with. I, I, I think that would actually be a pretty cool move. Um, anyway, this is the deck of Chris. We also looked at the deck of Peter Christian. I think both of these decks are, are beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to the match. Uh, let's go and have a look and see how it's going to end up. Game number one, we have Peter Christian on the left with his deck Dance of Fetties, and on the right we have Chris on the play here with his mono black deck. Starting with the Mana Vault, that is a great start for him because he's got a lot of creatures he can ramp into. Perhaps next turn is Sanger Vampire, for example. Also a Mana Vault by Peter Christian. So we could see a lot of bigger creatures coming quite early in this matchup. There is the second Swamp. Are we going to see a Sengir? Juggernaut is also an option. He's going to go through his hand. I mean, he can play it right now because also Peter Christian cannot counter yet, you know, having tapped his underground C. So he's going to tap four. Okay, there's a Juggernaut. So a 5-3 creature that has to attack every single turn cannot be blocked by walls. There's the second blue by Peter Christian. Looks like he's taking it back though. He's playing out a Mishra's Factory instead. But taking that back again maybe as well. I mean, one of the things he could do, of course, is, you know, say, I'm just going to take the five from the Juggernaut. The next turn, I'm going to block on my Mistress Factory because then it doesn't have summoning sickness anymore. It can pump itself, make itself a 3-3 after blockers have been declared and kind of, you know, block with this factory, trade the factory for the Juggernaut. That's an option. But perhaps, you know, he also wants to have double blue open for a possible counterspell or maybe he wants to play out a bigger creature. 
So there's the blue tapping five. Okay, are we going to see an air elemental? Yep, there's the air elemental. I believe he plays with a full playset in his deck. And now Chris is going to take a damage from the mana vault. Now, if Chris can find a terror or a paralyze, that would be ideal for him. Tapping two, there's a terror taking care of the air elemental. That means he can uh, swing in for five. I wanted to say fly in, but it's not flying. <laughs> So five damage plus then a damage from the mana vault. So he's now on 14. There's that factory we saw earlier. There's a dance of many. So the card we discussed in the deck deck. So dance of many, a card from the dark and enchantment. When it comes into play, it can copy target non-creature token. And uh, it's going to copy the juggernaut probably. So that means a juggernaut on juggernaut. That's kind of what I'm expecting. There's another land from Chris. So he's got four mana. And of course, Juggernaut has to attack every turn. So there's the attack. Yep. So there's the trade. So both players losing their Juggernauts. And there's Hypnotic Spectre. Ooh, that is a great follow-up. Also, after destroying, uh, killing that uh, Air Elemental earlier in the game. I wonder if Bather now has, for example, a Ghost Ship. No, he does not. Another Dance of Many. So he's going to copy... They've not expect her. I mean, it's better than not being able to copy it, but it's, again, it's not something that Peter Christian wants to do. But you don't want to lose a card, so I really understand this play. There's a terror. I wonder if the token that's being copied is also black. I believe it's also black, so that means he cannot play a terror on that one. He can, of course, play a paralyze if he has one. Tapping four, so he's going to do something else. Okay, a drain life for two. Wow, and uh, Chris is really finding his removal here, which is great for him. And now Peter Christian is going to lose a card here. He's going to lose a Jam Day Tome. That's not too bad. He's also going to drop to 11. Or did he already take the damage from the Hippie? Not sure if he did. But I could be mistaken, of course. There's the attack for two. Could pump it to three if he wants to. That is the question now. But of course, the problem here is that he needs a blocker for the Hypnotic Spectre. Here we see Chris dropping to 16 because of his own Mana Vault. So he can attack, put Peter Christian on 10 and forcing him to discard another card. That's of course a big problem. And Chris going through the cards in his hand. I would always first attack, exactly, attack first. There we see Peter dropping to 10. He's going to lose another card. I mean, unfortunately, we cannot see it. It's out of our screen, but I believe it is. Is it a black card? Then it would be the Demonic Tutor. Anyway, it's hard to see, but he is losing that card. That is unfortunate here for Peter Christian because yeah, he's so far behind now. And that's really what Hippie does. It gives you card advantage. And he's going to go through the graveyard, maybe checking for counter magic. Oh, he's going to play anime dead. So he's going to play an anime dead on the uh, air elemental that he terrorized earlier in the match. Peter dropping to nine. It's looking really, really bad for Peter. What he needs right now is a land and maybe a Mamo Di Jin. Can't seem to find it though. I believe Chris still needs to take a damage. Going to go to 14, I think. But maybe I missed it. Again, the attack for five here. Peter Christian losing another card. Again, hard to see. I believe it was a counter spell. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is with blue, if you fall behind, then your counter magic is just not that great, you know, because you got to change what's, what's happening on the board. If you don't have a quick answer to Hypnotic Spectre, games can be over quite soon. Anyway, both of these players are going to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here is about to begin. So we've got Peter Christian on the play with his deck Dance of Fetties. And I wonder how they sideboard it. I wonder if Chris has put in his Cormus Bell and his Bat Moons. That would be pretty sweet. Then again, it went so well in game one. Maybe he didn't change a thing. There we see a blue by Peter and a pass. There we see another Swamp Wall, another the first Swamp by Chris. There's a Felwer Stone, so ramping up a little bit. Are we going to see a Black Knight here? Turn 2. There's the Black Knight. 2-2 two, two first strike protection from white. And it also has a pretty cool flavor text. I'm not sure about the German flavor text, by the way, but the English one's quite nice. 
There is another blue. So he's got four mana. I'm, I'm trying to think what could he play with four mana? I mean, the Sage of Letnam could be an option. Exactly, tapping the Felwer Stone for that. There's the Sage. Because you want to keep the two blue open for counter magic. So this makes perfect sense. And actually, the Felwer Stone being able to make black is not too bad for, for Peter because uh, it allows him to play his Demonic Tutor, his one black card in his deck. There's the attack with the Black Knight, so he's going to drop to 18. And another Black Knight here for um, for Chris. And I think if you're Peter Christian, you're really hoping to find your Surrendip or your Ghost Ship. Tapping 5. Okay, there's an Air Elemental. An Air Elemental is great, but it's very vulnerable, though, because, you know, Peter has to tap out completely. And now if uh, Chris has, for example, a Terror, it's bye-bye for the Air Elemental. There's another Swamp. Then again, if he doesn't have removal, it will be absolutely great. He could also attack and, for example, play a Howl from Beyond. Okay, there we see a Terror. Yep. That's the problem. That means Chris only has to invest two mana to destroy a creature that has caused Pater to tap out completely. And it would have been much better for him if he could have played, for example, a Surrender Befreed and he would have been able to protect it with Counter Magic because he could keep two blue open. There's a Dance of Many. Yeah, again, he's kind of forced to copy creatures he doesn't really want to copy. In this case, he's copying the Black Knight. And I mean, if, if you're Chris, you're, you're not too worried. You're just going to go and attack again. He's making some space. What is he going to play out then? Perhaps another Juggernaut? No, he's going to attack first. Makes sense. There's the traits. He's going to take two. So Pater's going to drop to 12. Tapping four. What are we going to see? There's a Juggernaut. There's a Mana Drain. Okay, so now he, he had Mana open to counter something. So there's a Mana Drain. So he's got four extra mana now. Remember, his deck is full of like bigger creatures like Mamoti Jin, for example. How cool would it be if you could now uh, pay two blue, use the extra mana from the Mana Drain to cast a Mamoti Jin? That would kind of be like living the dream for Peter. First, he's going to attack. Interesting. He's going to put Chris on 19... This is an interesting move. Why is he attacking? I guess because he's not going to block the knight anyway, but I would always kind of keep it open. There's a counter spell here on the hypnotic specter, which is important. There's the attack again. But a change of mind because Peter's saying, okay, don't forget my uh, my mistress factory, which is quite nice, Peter, that you, <laughs> that you mentioned that. But like this is old school. People are quite relaxed, so it's it's fine. But it's really nice for Peter to kind of point that out. Um, tapping lots of mana, four mana, Nevenerals Disc. So he's keeping his factory untapped so that he can, you know, block the uh, the knight. And this disc is actually not. I mean, it's not too bad if you're if you're Peter if you're Chris. I mean, because he only has the Black Knight, so he can be like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to commit to the board at this point. And I'm just going to wait until you use the disc. And remember, Chris is playing with Howl from Beyond. And Howl from Beyond goes together really well with Black Knight because of Black Knight's first strike ability. It's quite nice. And I guess Chris is kind of in the tank passing the turn right now. I, I think this makes sense, you know, for, for Chris just not to do anything at this point. You don't want to commit more to the board with the Nevenerals disc, unless you've got a really good hand and you're like, okay, I can just play out, for example, one creature to kind of force him to pop the disc and then I know that the rest of my hand is really strong. Looks like he's got another Animate Dead going through the graveyards, playing an Animate Dead. There's a counter spell though on the Animate. Again, interesting choice here by, by Peter because he could have, I mean, I don't know what else is in his hand, but he could have decided, you know what, I'm going to let you use the Animate and then I'm just going to pop the disc. And remember, he can use his Sage to sack the Felwer to get a card for that. So, you know, in that case, he would have a two-for-two two trade, I guess, because he's losing the Sage and he's losing the Disc for the Animate Dead and the... Um, ooh, look at that. Ancestral Rico from the top. So drawing three cards. And the Black Knight, that's what I wanted to say. Anyway, Peter drawing three cards. And, I mean, this could be the game changer, this Ancestral Rico, because this is going to give him some card advantage. 
And now he's a little bit in the tank because are you going to tap out because then you don't have counter magic anymore? It looks like the answer is yes. Okay, he's going to play at a jam date home. And another underground C. So now this is kind of the moment where I think when you're Chris, you're going to start playing out cards again because, you know, Peter is very unlikely to kind of pop the disc uh, soon because he doesn't want to destroy his own gem datome. So if, for example, if Chris would have uh, a Sengir Vampire in hand, I would now play it out. Anyway, passing the turn here to Peter Christian. There is a strip mine. It's going to tap. Okay, he's going to draw a card there with his gem datome. And it's always nice when there's a standstill uh, situation in the game and you're the one with the tome, you're good with that. You're fine with the st a standstill. There's a Mishra's Factory by Chris. And Chris really just needs a flyer. If he can get that, you know, Sengir Vampire and kind of fly over the troops, he's fine, you know. There's another Felwer Stone. And he's going to do some more tapping. Or not. No, he's not. He's just going to pass the turn there. Another Swamp here for Chris. So Chris is not finding a lot. I believe it's hard. Of course, we cannot see his hand, but I believe he's got like two or three cards max in hand. And it looks like he's a little bit doubting whether or not to play out a certain card. Because he is in a tank. I wonder what that could be. Because you want to get rid of that Jam Day Tome. That is so important right now. So if you have something to pressure the board, I'm sure Chris would, would have played it out already, kind of forcing... Uh, Peter to pop the disc because I mean the longer this takes the further he gets behind with that gem day tome look at this tapping six oh brain geyser so we saw ancestral recall we saw gem day tome drawing him cards and now he's also cast a brain geyser so he's got so much card advantage this game finding another blue tapping the blue it seems what is he gonna do just passing the turn. I think he's passing the turn because he wants to keep counter magic open. He wants to keep control of the game, and I think that's a good decision. There's the attack. Is he also attacking with the factory, it seems? So he's going to block the knight, pump the knight. I'm expecting a howl from beyond here, or is he blocking the factory? Let me. I, I, I'm expecting something. Yeah, howl from beyond. So howl from beyond for... Wow! Three, five, seven, nine, ten. That means he dies. That's twelve. That means he's dead. It's a hell from beyond on the factory that's unblockable. He's counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Oh, he's gonna go to one. It's of eleven, of course, because you got the casting cost of the uh Hell from Beyond itself as well. But what a great move by Chris and really showing the power, of course, in response to this. Uh in response to this. Peter could have decided to pop the disc, but he's deciding not to. I mean, then again, if Peter's got counter magic in hand, he really has to keep it open to counter a drain life because that is that is Peter's biggest enemy right now. But just to clarify, one of the things he could have done is in response to the hell from beyond, blow up the board. And because the factory is a creature, it would get destroyed too. The problem, of course, of that move is that he's going to lose his gem day tome. So there we see... A demonic tutor here by Peter Christian. But what a move by Chris here. I really like it. What a move. And this is why I like cards from Howl from Beyond. You don't see them often, but if you've got a creature heavy strategy, I mean, it could be worth it, you know, because these cards can bring you the victory out of nowhere. Tapping quite a lot here. What is he going to do? Playing an air elemental. Okay, I mean, that's it's looking pretty good now. And he's got counter magic. Ooh, this is risky. This is risky. He's going to copy it, but this is risky. If Chris now has a drain life. I mean, it's it's a big if, but I mean, you know, Chris only has one card in hand, two. No, it's more cards. Three or four. If he has the drain life. Uh-oh. Yeah, drain life for one. That's it. Oh. And of course, I don't know, Peter, if you had counter magic. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. I'm sure you didn't. But even if you didn't, I would have kept 2Blue open to pretend to have counter magic in hand. But that's just me, you know. I'm just this 
Yeah, I'm this blue player who always wants to keep two blue open. Anyway, uh, wow, what a match. Beautiful decks. Unfortunately, it's a 2-0 because I would have loved to see a game number three. But, you know, this is tournament magic, guys. And uh, congratulations to Chris for winning it with his beautiful German foreign black bordered deck. And that was the game for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And also a big thank you goes out to Peter Christian and Chris for showing their skills on the channel. Thank you guys so much. Without players like you, Timmy Talks wouldn't exist. So thank you guys. Um, and before you go, I'd like to ask you to do a few things that are completely free and it really help the channel move forward. Please take a moment to like, share and comment on these videos. All these things help and they're completely free. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to Old School. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring that bell. Yes, yes, and now that that's out of the way, there's one thing I'd like to talk to you about, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because we have our own Patreon page, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, where you can become a patron of the channel. And as a patron, you are supporting the channel financially and helping me keep the channel afloat, keeping it alive. So please take a moment to visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, or click on the info card that's appearing right now and have a look on the page. You can already become a member for $1 a month. And for that membership, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, you get access to the Timmy Talks online tournaments and events, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.